today's lecture we will study Euler graphs and Hamiltonian graphs. First Euler graphs. if some closed walk in a graph contains all the edges of the graph then the walk is called an Euler line and the graph is called an Euler graph. Now, here we have to remember that the way we define walk it means that the vertices can be repeated, but edges cannot be repeated. So, essentially I need a I need to traverse on the graph in such a way that I start from one point and come back to that same point. So, I have got a closed walk and in between I can come to a vertex more than once, but I cannot repeat edges. For example, if I have a graph like this, then of course, it is a Euler graph because I can start from this point and then come back and come back over here. I can attach another circuit over here and the complete thing is again a Euler graph because I can start let us say from this vertex come like this then move like this then move like this move like this move like this 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 and this. So, I get a closed walk which covers all the edges. Now, there is one question that by looking at a graph can I quickly determine whether it is a it is an Euler graph or not? The answer is surprisingly easy and it was proved by Euler uh, who lived from 1707 to 1783. So, Euler 1707 to 1783 proved the following a given connected graph G is an Euler graph if and only if all vertices of G are of even degree. Now, the question is why? Now, I will only give a sketch of the proof. Now, let us suppose that 
I have an Euler graph. Let us suppose a graph like what we have seen before. So, what happens there is that I start from a vertex and then go to another vertex. When I come to this vertex, since it is an Euler graph, I must be able to get out of it to another vertex. From this also, I should be able to get out of it and then like this. So, whenever I am entering a vertex, I must have, a, uh, I, I must be able to get out of it through another edge and ultimately, I come back to the original edge. So, in the original edge, I go out like this, wherever I come in, I get out through another edge. So, always the edges are coming in pairs and eventually, I am coming back to the original vertex. This is why, uh, if I have an Euler graph, then each vertex has to be, has to have a uh, even number as its degree. Now, the connectedness is also assumed because of course, uh, otherwise I can have some isolated points, but I am not considering that, I am just considering connected graphs. The question is that whether it is true in the converse direction. That means, suppose I have a graph with each element, sorry, each vertex have an, having even degree, will it be an Euler graph? The answer is yes, and the proof goes like this that suppose I start from a uh, start from a vertex of that of a graph whose degrees are even. Uh, so, then I can always move out to another vertex, let us say from V 1 to V 2 and from V 2 I can move to another vertex, let us say V 3, because whenever I get in I will always have a different edge to get out, because uh, the uh, vertices are of even degree. And in this way, if I start moving around, then eventually I will come to V 1. Now, the question is that whether I have covered all the edges. Now, if I have covered all the edges, then already I have got an Euler line but suppose I have not covered all the edges, that means there are some edges left and there are. So, I have to search here some vertex where the degree is more than 1, suppose uh, sorry more than 2. So, suppose in the vertex V 3 the degree is more than 2, that means there are some ed other edges coming out of it what I can do is that I can cut this graph out and start from V 3 again and stra start traversing the graph. I will do that and eventually I will come to V 3 again. I ask the same question, suppose I have covered all the edges, then, then I have got an Euler line because I can go like this up to V 3 and take this route and then like this, move like this, this and come back and if it, if it, if it uh, does not cover all the edges, then there will be somewhere in one of the, uh, in one of the vertices which has got degree more than 2, I can again start from that vertex and cover. So, in this way I can construct a Euler line, therefore, we have got a very nice characterization of Euler graphs. A graph G is an Euler graph if and only if 
all vertices of G are of even degree. This theorem has a very famous application which is called Konigsberg bridge problem and in fact Euler developed this theorem to solve Konigsberg bridge problem and in the process wrote the first paper in graph theory. Two islands C and D formed by the Pregel River in Konigsberg where connected to each other and the banks A and B by seven bridges. So, we draw the configuration, we have got a river flowing across a river uh, across a city Konigsberg and the city is developed uh, on both sides of the river and there are two islands. So, the banks are A and B which I shade over here and two islands C and D which are also shaded. The islands are connected by bridges and there are some bridges connecting the banks to the islands. So, these are the bridges. Now, the question is whether one can start from one of the banks or islands and traverse through the bridges, uh, traverse through each of the bridges exactly once and come back to the same point. Now, people before Euler were trying to solve this problem and did not get an answer. What Euler proved is that this scenario can be mapped to a graph theoretic problem and then by the theorem that he proved. Uh, the theorem that we saw just now, it is absolutely clear that you cannot have a, an Euler line and hence it is not possible to traverse through all the uh, bridges exactly once and come back to the same point. Now, if we want to transform this problem to a, a graph theoretic problem, then we get something like this. The vertices are labeled as A, B, C, D corresponding to the land masses and the bridges by the edges. So, A to C, there is one bridge and this is the second bridge. 
C to B there is one bridge and this is a second bridge A to D we have got one bridge and B to D there is one bridge and there is a bridge connecting C to D. What we see here is a degree of A is 3, degree of D is also 3 and so on. So, of course, all the vertices are not of even degree, so no question of getting uh, an Euler line and therefore, no question of uh, being able to traverse each bridge exactly once starting from one of the land masses and coming back to the same land mass. Now, as a consequence of the first theorem, there is another theorem which I state without a proof, it states that a connected graph G is an Euler graph if and only if it can be decomposed into circuits. So, this is again another result which is more or less obvious. So, I leave it uh, to you for proofs. Now, as we have seen that this problem of uh, whether a graph is an Euler graph or not has got a very uh, concrete and definite answer, there is another problem which is which sounds similar, but which has been elusive uh, from from the beginning till now. For that we come to the idea of Hamiltonian paths and circuits. a circuit in a graph G is said to be Hamiltonian if it includes every vertex of G. Alternatively, a Hamiltonian circuit in a connected graph is defined as a closed walk
that traverses every vertex of G exactly once. Now, what is a Hamiltonian path? A Hamiltonian path is an open walk in a graph G which traverses every vertex of G exactly once. Now, if a graph has a Hamiltonian circuit, then we will call that graph a Hamiltonian graph. If a graph has a Hamiltonian circuit, then we will call it a Hamiltonian graph. Now, let us look at some examples of Hamiltonian graph. If we have a cycle like this, of course, this is a Hamiltonian graph because I can move like this, this and this and come back. So, it is uh, I have moved through all the vertices exactly once and come back to the same vertex. Now, if I have something like this, then it is not a Hamiltonian graph because uh, let us say if I start from here, I can come here, here and I can come back over here, but if I go from here to somewhere over here, then I can never come back. I can try from, so whenever I reach over here, I have no way that is here, I have no way of going anywhere except for repeating one vertex. So, I do not have a Hamiltonian path, so, sorry I do not have a Hamiltonian circuit, but see I have a I have a Hamiltonian path because I can always start from here, come here, then traverse like this and traverse like this. So I I can traverse all the vertices exactly once. So I have a by an open path. So I have a I have a Hamiltonian path, but I don't have a Hamiltonian circuit. Now there are uh, some graphs for which we know that there are Hamiltonian circuits. One famous graph is called a complete graph. A simple graph
in which there exists an edge between every pair of vertices is called a complete graph. A complete graph with n vertices is denoted by k sub n. A complete graph with n vertices is denoted by k sub n. So, uh, well if we have k 2, k 2 is simply this, k 3 is simply a cycle and k 4 is a graph like this. Now, we can ask a question that what is the number of edges in a complete graph? Now, the answer goes like this that if I have a complete graph, then I can choose any two uh, distinct uh, vertices and I am sure to have a, an edge between those two vertices and a single edge because after all the graph is a sim simple graph. Therefore, the number of edges is exactly equal to number of ways I can choose two objects from n objects which is n choose 2 and which is equal to n into n minus 1 divided by 2. So, I can write that the total number of edges in a complete graph is n into n minus 1 divided by 2. Now, we will also note that a complete graph is Hamiltonian. The reason is that I can always start from any vertex let us say uh, I start from 1 and then I go to 2 and from 2 I will always be able to go to 3 because 2, 3 are connected and like that I can keep on going up to n supposing that the complete graph is with n vertices and I have labeled the vertices from 1 to n and then from n I will always be able to come back to 1. So, for example, if we take k 4 given above, so here this is 1 and then suppose uh, this is 2, then suppose this is 3 and from 3 I can always go to 4, this is 4 and I can always come back to 1. So, thus it is complete and this works for any this works for any complete graph. So, the one Hamiltonian path is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and like that up to n and then n connected to 1. So, I can ask a question now that how many edge disjoint Hamiltonian paths are there in a complete graph and we have a definite answer to that which is 
as follows. So, for n odd and n greater than or equal to 3, for a complete graph with n vertices, we have got exactly n minus 1 divided by 2 ed edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits. Now, the question is how do we prove, prove it? Now, if we think in this way that a Hamiltonian circuit in a graph with n vertices will have n edges. A Hamiltonian circuit in a graph in a complete graph or basically in any graph in a, in a graph with n vertices has n edges now i am looking for the number of edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits in a complete graph. A complete graph as we have already seen has n into n minus 1 divided by 2 many edges. A complete graph with n vertices has n into n minus 1 divided by 2 many edges. Therefore, since we are looking for edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits, the maximum number of edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits that a complete graph with n vertices can have is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 the whole thing divided by n. So, the maximum number of edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits in a complete graph is 1 by n into n 
n minus 1 divided by 2, so n by 2, n minus 1 by 2. Now, so we know the maximum number possible and our result says that that is exactly the number of distinct uh, edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits. Now, how do we prove that? And we take uh, a way of writing the graph, we start from 1, go to 2, from 2 we will go to 3 and from 3 we will come back to 4, then we will move to 5 and then we will move to 6, from 6 I will go to 7, from 7 to 8, from 8 to 9 and 9 I will go back to 1 and these vertices can be thought of being on a circle. So, we get a Hamiltonian uh, circuit as 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 5 uh, sorry uh, 3 to 4, 4 to 5 then 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9 and 9 to 1 and what we will observe that instead of going from 1 to 2, if I go from uh, rotate this whole thing and go from 1 to 3 and do similar things then we will get another Hamiltonian circuit and maximum number of times I can do is 1, 2, 3, 4 in this case. So, I can get 4 distinct Hamiltonian circuits and that is the maximum number of circuits possible because 4 is equal to 9 minus 1 by 2. In general, uh, if n is odd, then this number will be n minus 1 by 2 and by writing the vertices in such a way, we can show that we can get all the n minus 1 by 2 many distinct uh, that is uh, Hamiltonian circuits. Now, we end today's lecture by stating one uh, sufficient condition for a graph to be a Hamiltonian graph. A sufficient condition for a simple graph to have a Hamiltonian circuit is that the degree of every vertex in G be at least n by 2, when n is the number of vertices of G. Now, this was proved by Dirac in a paper entitled Connectivity Theorem for Graphs published in uh, quarterly Journal of Maths, 
series 2 volume 3 1952 uh, 171 to 174. Now, a word of caution this is a sufficient condition we know that if a graph has this property then definitely it will have a Hamiltonian path, but there are graphs sorry if a graph has this property then definitely it will have a Hamiltonian circuit, but there are graphs which are Hamiltonian that is which have Hamiltonian circuits, but which do not satisfy this property. This is the end of today's lecture, thank you.